Welcome everyone to our Oracle Analytics Live for February 2022. Just a reminder here, please introduce yourself when you join, uh, let us know what country you're coming from. And there is a live Q&A uh, session at the end, so stay for that, we'll have our team answering your questions. This is our safe harbor statement, you can take a moment to look at that. All right, we've got our team here on today, and we have a packed agenda, lots of updates, lots of demos, and let's get right into it. The product strategy update, pass it over to Ben here. Perfect. Thanks, Alex. Uh, so I put my uh, Red Bull hat. I think uh, Joey has a lot of uh, update about that today, and Carrie also. Uh, so we are really happy about that. Um, I'm going to give you just a quick overview. Uh, we had the January update for Oracle Analytics Cloud 6.4. Uh, we have Auto Insight and we have um, Alexandria, which is going to do a demo today of Auto Insight. So stay tuned. Don't leave before seeing the demo. Uh, also, you can see that in this new update, we have um, a skinny donut, a new way to display a pie chart, which is really cool. The Redwood uh, template is now mandatory. You can see it's the dark bar at the top. You have new icons. And then we have also different changes, including a neural network, a machine learning algorithm that you can register. So pack of new features uh, in January. Be sure to use the latest version. It's always better. Next slide. OK, on the next slide, I wanted to uh, just reiterate three things. One, we have a brand new Oracle Analytics website. We made a refresh. You will see a lot of good data visualization, a lot of news. Who are our top customers using Oracle Analytics? You can go using oracle.com slash analytics. Um, on the same website at the top, you have a menu. In this menu, if you go, you can see that you have a roadmap. If you select the roadmap for the platform, you will see uh, we are very transparent. We show you exactly what's coming in terms of features for this year. So again, every quarter we refresh that. So go to the website, look at the roadmap, and you will know that we are going to have uh, some new features. If you want to know a little bit more, uh, we have all the team uh, doing some article on our blog. So same thing on oracle.com slash analytics. You can find the blog. We have article on what are going to be the new feature for 2022? What is the Oracle Live with TK and Joey? You have also everything about how to submit your IDs to the ID lab or how to go to Customer Connect and chat with the community. So again, one uh, URL to go and you can find all the information easily. Uh, we can go to the next slide. And I think you can continue directly, Alex. And thank you everyone for joining today. I just wanted to show you a last thing before going. Uh, this year, we will have two big announcements about the web semantic modeler. You saw that in the blog. You saw that in different uh, articles. We are going to allow you to do data modeling directly from Oracle Analytics Cloud. And then you will have also the integration of the AI services, which are now inside Oracle Cloud infrastructure you will be able to do AI vision, AI language directly inside Oracle Analytics. You saw some video on YouTube about that. Uh, you can go to our Oracle Analytics YouTube channel and see some of these demo. So thanks everyone for joining. And today we will have um, our executive update with Joy Fitz. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. And maybe you can uh, just do us a favor and pop that link down in the chat for everyone. Just, uh, they want yeah. to give a click. Okay, let's move on to Joey. Joey, I'll Thanks, pass Alex. Over. Thanks everybody for being here today. These are always fun, fast moving, full of great content. So I won't take up too much of your time, but I did want to point you to a few recent updates that you may not have seen. Um, so first and foremost, a big thank you to you. So it's our community who has weighed in to G2, if you're not familiar with G2, it's a, it's a review site for software and we're very happy to be listed as a top analytics and AI product. Uh, so thank you. 
Also continuing, you may have seen or may have missed uh, a webcast that we had last week that featured, as you see on the left there, it was Stephanie uh, who runs our healthcare business chatting with uh, DJ Patil, who was the famously the first US chief data scientist in the Obama administration. Um, they had a good conversation. And then our CIO, this whole event series is called CIO Exchange because it's Jay Evans, who's Oracle's CIO, having a lot of these conversations with, uh, with customers, with thought leaders, et cetera. In this case, she was talking to Nat West and they had a, they had a, good, a good conversation. And then we got into uh, even more specifics on the analytics front. Analytics was a theme throughout, but uh, if you go to the next slide, we'll zoom in on this blueprint for transformation conversation that featured James Richardson, former Gartner analyst, who's now on our team, uh, having a chat with Greg Pavlik, who leads our data and AI services efforts, and TK Anand, who you all know, uh, who leads our, our analytics business. So uh, great conversation, covered everything uh, spanning data, analytics, uh, data science, lake house, um, a nice variety of topics and more strategic in nature for those of you who are leading your your data and analytics strategies. Uh, I think you'll you'll get some value from this conversation. So I wanted you to point point you to that as well. And on the next slide, it's mysterious, and you're going to learn more about that now. Big news from Oracle, and I'm not going to steal this thunder. I'm going to pass it over to Carrie to tell you more. Enjoy the rest of today's show, everybody. All right, sports analytics update with Carrie. Let's find out what's going on there. Carrie. Thank you, Alex. Yes, uh, thanks, Joy. Exciting news, right? For those of you who did not hear the news, Oracle and Red Bull uh, recently expanded their partnership. Um, some exciting news. And man, was it exciting. And rumor has it Twitter was overwhelmed um, with Oracle Red Bull racing news, and they called to see what was going on. I think globally, there was over 80 million media impressions um, that were captured. So lots of buzz and, and excitement around this partnership. Um, what you'll see in the partnership is there's a new team name. You'll now see Oracle Red Bull Racing as uh, the new uh, name, and you'll see a new team car. So I'll be posting some links into the chat where you can learn about the new RB18 car, and it proudly uh, sports the Oracle logo, you know, side, front, and center. So that'll be exciting for that to be a part of uh, the racing this year at F1. Um, they're also expanding their use of Oracle Cloud infrastructure, and they're going to, you know, continue improving their race and engine development. Uh, last year alone, they increased the number of simulations they ran by a thousand times. Uh, this helped improve the accuracy of their predictions and sharpen their decision making. Um, they also accelerated the simulation speed by 10x, which gave the strategists more time to make the right call. Uh, on the fan experience side, uh, you guys hopefully are all registered as a Red Bull Racing Paddock fan. Um, just this last week, they added over 36,000 new members um, from all the socialization. This is where you can go register to be a fan and get up to date on all the news. Um, and you can also win prizes and collect points um, to be able to win prizes. Um, this year, now they're going to be expanding out new features to boost the excitement and create a stronger connection with fans. Um, and then last but not least, which is Mike's most exciting thing I'm excited about, is the new gaming partnership. So you'll now see we have an Oracle Red Bull Racing Esports, and uh, the partnership is going to develop the, the, the next generation of the world-class drivers. So through AI and MLs, the junior drivers will be able to understand what they're doing, uh, get informed, fine-tune their driving style. Uh, and ultimately reduce their lap time so they can win. Uh, this is going to be including some Oracle Analytics dashboards. Um, the, today, we also have a special guest. So if you want to go to the next slide, I would like to welcome Emil. Uh, Emil. Oh, sorry, I've got a Formula One right before that. Sorry, for, for all you Formula One junkies, this is actually tied to Formula uh, the race. There's a hackathon that's happening this weekend. It's not too late to register. Uh, there's three main hacks that are going to be a part of this. It is weather predictions, augmented reality, and 3D race modeling. Um, and lucky winner uh, team will actually win a trip to the UK to attend the official Red Bull factory. Oh, we have a participant. Super, Danielle. Uh, excited to see what you put together. If you want to put in there which theme you're selecting, it would be great to hear that as well. 
Um, but this will be exciting. There's over 60,000 uh, Australian um, AUD being um, given to the winners. Um, on, you know, included in that is the, the race to that. So um, very exciting. All right, next slide. Okay, today's the last day also to register. Um, it's been going around on social. Uh, this is for active grad students that want to get involved in sports analytics. Um, make sure you check out the MIT Sloan Sports Analytics Innovation Challenge. It's sponsored by Oracle. Um, it's about reimagining re the fan experience. Uh, the, the winning team's going to get a summer internship in sports analytics at Oracle. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me as well. Uh, we'll be posting the links in the chat uh, for you to go out and do some research. But remember, today is currently the last day. All right, last topic here. Go ahead and move forward. Uh, last last uh, session, we talked about Pi Day coming. Um, it is, the registration can be coming up anytime. Uh, we're gonna get weird and it's for developers. And it is really, it was hoping to be a non-virtual event, but with COVID, it's going to be a virtual event where you can learn uh, about new products that are being, uh, there's 24 different tracks being presented and you, you can do some hands-on labs as well. So mark your date, March 14th, um, and why not? There's lots of great content, even if you're watching and learning about, and you know, all of the different Oracle products that are there, it pretty much covers the whole gamut. Uh, next slide. Where do you wanna go? Go to developer.oracle.com. You'll see it on the banner there where the registration will come where you can register for the event. Um, Oracle Analytics, uh, cloud specifically is going to be having two tracks, uh, one with Mike Duran, who will be doing a demo about building a custom mobile application with geospatial visualization. And we will be hosting uh, myself and a number of other uh, data scientists and database uh, people for a hands-on lab. And, and here you're going to be able to step through um, configuring data science notebook sessions using Python code to access public uh, NBA API bringing that data into the autonomous database and analyzing uh, your favorite team's performance using OAC. So please uh, keep an eye out and join us for that if you are able. I think that's it. Thanks, Carrie. We're gonna move over to Beth now for an update on the current events happening. Hey, Beth. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. I'm Beth Popham and I manage Oracle Analytics, Events, and Community Outreach. Next one. So I wanted to just share with you here today some upcoming events that Oracle Analytics is participating in. Uh, first up here, we are sponsoring three Gartner events. So if you or your company are participating in these events, please stop by, look us up where our booth is. I can't tell you at the time what number those are, but they will be uh, shared soon. Um, we'll be, like I said, we'll have a booth and we'll have a session. So please uh, mark your calendars for these Gartner events if you're going to be there and visit us. Next events to pop there. We also will have a, um, our, I guess what, third annual OA Summit. Hopefully this one will be the second annual in-person OA Summit coming up in June. That will take place in California. And at that event, if you haven't participated in them before, the last couple of years, obviously, they have been online. But um, they are great events for the community to get together to, you know, really talk about and address all of the issues that they're uh, looking at in their industry. And uh, we'll share a lot of success stories from our customers and our partners. And then you'll hear from TK Anand on his vision for Oracle Analytics. Next pop there. They're not really in order, but okay. So uh, open world, it is coming back and it is going to be in person in October. Unfortunately, I don't have a link or information that I can really share with you right now, but know that it is coming. Oracle is planning and you will be hearing a lot about it. And the next one, Alex, there we go. Um, <clears throat> Oracle Analytics will be having an analytics day. This will be in association with the Gartner event and that will take place on May 12th. And we'll have some more information and registration and registration page to share with you as well. 
And Pi Day, Carrie already went through this, but I'll put in the chat uh, the link there, or actually Alex may. Um, you can register for the Pi Day, and there is lots of great swag if you're interested. Um, but as Carrie said, Pi Day is going to be an exciting event. It will be a 24 hour based event. And I'll start in um, Asia Pacific and go through EMEA and then uh, end in the US. And um, there's going to be a lot of really cool sessions. As Carrie said, there's, uh, I think, over 300 sessions going on. And, and Oracle Analytics has two sessions one starting in the EMEA with Mike Duran, and the second one with Carrie and her team for sports analytics. So go ahead and uh, use that link and register and join us. Thank you. And the last one, again, in association with Gartner, we will be having an uh, Asia PAC Analytics Day there on November 9th. And again, stay tuned for how you can register and participate. Have a great weekend. Thanks, Beth. Some exciting events coming up here. Uh, you can find them in the chat. And some more information on those will be coming out soon if uh, the information is not quite out yet. So hi, everyone. I'm Alex Toothman. I'm part of the product strategy team here. And I want to encourage you to join our Cloud Customer Connect community. Um, you can see we have over 300,000 users, over 200,000 discussions, um, and it's really a place um, for a supportive, collaborative tech community. Um, customers, partners, product experts can all come together and collaborate. You can find information on training, events. Um, you can also access the Idea Lab here. Um, I've talked about the Idea Lab before on here, but if um, you don't know what that is, it's a place where you can share your your ideas, what the products um, need. And this isn't just for Oracle Analytics. You can access um, the Idea Lab for other Oracle products as well. So I'll encourage you to um, sign up. It's free. Go in, submit your ideas, what we can, um, what product features we need. Um, go and vote on other people's ideas. I know from the Oracle Analytics side, our team does a really fabulous job going in there and commenting back and getting those uh, feature requests on the road map. And speaking of the roadmap, here we go. An update on the Oracle Analytics roadmap. We just had the 6.4 version release here. Um, you can see we're in this middle column here. Last year, we had over 100 different uh, feature or version uh, features released. Um, and you can see we're in the middle column here, some exciting stuff, export to Excel, web-based semantic modeler, um, OCI vision in product integration and moving to the second half of the year some more exciting stuff uh, key metric semantics for data sets and subject areas uh, dv scheduled exports and distribution a lot of stuff here i think uh ben did share uh the link to the roadmap where you can find some more information there so if you want to take a in-depth look next month we're going to have gabby come on and talk a little more on what you can expect for the March version release here. And I'm going to pass it over to Jamie. And she's going to do a um, nice little overview for us on the FAW side of the house. Thanks, Alex. So um, in terms of um, FAW or Fusion Analytics, um, if we look at the first half of this year for 2022, we can now see that Fusion um, CX is coming down the pipeline. Um, so it's really exciting um, starting out with some lead analytics, sales activity an analysis, um, campaign ROI and CPQ and analytics. Um, also Fusion SCM, which I'll do a little small demo later in the call about. Um, we have shipping, cost accounting, cost of goods sold and gross margin coming down the pipeline. Um, and then of course, um, we have Fusion HCM analytics and Fusion ERP analytics. Um, we have updates to the talent dashboards, workforce valuation, personal data access audit and time and labor for HCM and then for ERP. Um, we have um, fixed asset depreciation, account analysis enhancements, um, project analysis and project forecast. Um, and then also just cross pillar. Um, so for all of our analytic, um, 
Fusion Analytics products, um, bundles, exports, and imports are coming out, uh, data validation, and that's something that customers have asked for. Um, private access channel, OAC usage tracking as well. Um, also some data augmentation with Salesforce, um, EBS, and OSS. And then semantic extensibility with our PD merge as well. Um, another thing that's not listed on this roadmap that personally gets me really excited just being a former customer in the ERP space is the ability to customize your financial categories within Fusion Analytics versus within the ERP space. I know that's something that our customers have also asked for. And what's also really cool is you can do it at the segment levels, so dimension levels. So if you have a cost center and a natural account that has a definition somewhere with one part of the company, but has kind of a different meaning in another part of the company, you can define that within Fusion Analytics. So um, I think that's really cool and I hope you guys think so too. Um, but I will pass it back to Alex. Um, and we can continue with the presentation. Thanks, Jamie, for that overview there. And we'll move forward. We're going to hop over to Barry now for um, some insights on Oracle Analytics. Barry, are you there? I am just waiting to share the screen. Okay. So, my name is Barry Moster with the uh, Product Marketing Group. And I'm just going to take you through some of the art of the possible once I get my screen. Which should be up now. Okay. So this is the um, Oracle Analytics homepage, Oracle Analytics Cloud. Oracle Analytics Server looks pretty similar. And um, you can see the favorite projects and things here. But the idea here is that we're going to use some natural language query because you don't want to have to create a dashboard or report for every single question you have. So I'm just gonna type in here revenue and discount. This is a, um, a sales oriented example, sales and discount uh, by let's look at it, say product type and our customer segment. And this is live. What I'm gonna show you is that I can actually make a mistake and say, let's type that wrong, but the system will still figure it out. And when I ask for the data, it'll go back and actually intuitively figure those um, keywords out against the right data set and create for me an interactive set of charts. So I might have just about answered my question right here. I can see the most um, uh, revenue generating products with a discount and see those things. Each of these is all interactive and live. So I can actually drill down to certain things, looking in the different um, metrics and dimensions that are available. Next along, I'm gonna take you to, uh, you know, pre-built kind of dashboard. This is kind of the classic Phillips thing you see for a finance dashboard, but this one has natural language built in. Um, and we can do more than just that, but you know, these are the traditional things we do. And what I want to show you is how we can actually create that natural language. So right here, I've got two live charts and I'm just going to do a control C or a control V, or I can just come in here and say, let's just uh, duplicate this visualization. And I have two of them now and doing a natural language um, narrative is as easy as adding a pie chart. You can see we have a bunch of um, different chart types we have available here. And we have this one, which is the narrative. And if I select that, no harder than creating a pie chart, there's my natural language um, narrative. And I can move this over here and expose our little bar so we can actually get to see some metrics about it. And now we have this uh, connected to the data, describing exactly what's happening in that chart, which is including a little bit of um, a forecast. And if I come over to the side, I can control the verbosity. If there's too much text, let's uh, bring that down a little. Uh, if I want to swap it to another language, this one's going to be able to switch to French, uh, one click, and we have it now in French. Um, so very easy to do. And, you know, the great thing about doing these um, narratives is that when the data changes, so does the narrative. You don't have to worry about manual updates. Moving along, just looking at some of the customizations possible, you can really create high fidelity dashboards within um, OAC. And you can see this is a classic kind of tile layout, each of these with a nice little forecast being uh, created on the fly. And I can shift along. You can customize these with your own um, specific colors and things to fit your internal um, website brandings and so forth. Um, and what if I show you these are all connected by default. So if I come to look at one of these, I can select one of these uh, bars here and it would automatically highlight the data points in the other charts that are contextually connected to that particular critical envelopes for the shipping company. All built in, does this automatically, you don't have to code or do sort of manual connections to see that happen. We can also do some 
uh, mapping. You know, sometimes those kind of traditional dashboards don't answer the question as easily as it would if it was a visual kind of concept like this directly from the over plan of a supermarket floor. And here's the foot traffic between the aisles in the supermarket. The cafe is down here on the bottom left. And here we have the times of day. So I can click on 6 to 9 a.m. and I can see it's kind of busy in the cafe. As I move through to um, the 9 till noon, it's kind of pretty much spread out across the uh, whole store. And at lunchtime, again, a little congregation are here. I want to move products that I'm not I'm selling at a, one of these back areas. You can shift this to the front and hopefully that will help um, get those custom, those products moving on a little bit. It also helps with social distancing. You can spot very easily and graphically where congestion occurs to, to mitigate that social distancing. Now we can also connect to other um, composable kind of services within the wider OCI platform. And this one's using some of the graph analytics, which has been shown in here. This is a container ship and I can use the chart again, this um, ship to be able to uh, choose a selection of containers that I'm looking at. And it will automatically filter my uh, visualization over here, the, the graph, and I can see exactly what's going on. In fact, if I want to go down a little bit, I'll select maybe just a couple. And let's go for a smaller sample. And we can see on the graph now we have exactly the segments connected to those uh, five containers that I have over here. And you can drag and drop and then zoom in and see how and where they're all starting and ending. Or I can come to the map and say, you know, let's have a look really um, at what's um, starting and ending in, in China. And I can just click on China here. And as I do that filter, it's going to update everything, including the manifest. And if I wanted to come down, I can look at exactly what containers are uh, starting and ending in China, I can right click and drill into those and I can start to look at the, the manifest within those containers and so forth. As I move on, uh, just another one, this is uh, was shown last week, it's kind of a cool one. The reason I like it is because it shows the auto zoom feature to show you the contextual um, stuff on the map. The map can be a little confusing because there's a lot of stuff on there. So if I come and say, let me focus on the yellow line, I can click on the yellow segment on my pie chart and it will connect and show me only the yellow um, line here, or I can connect to the green and it'll move around to the green or to the purple, um, kind of nice feature again, all built in and we'll then zoom out and see the whole thing. And the last one I've got for you today, you know, I try and move these up and change them around, but this one seems to be always an interesting one is how to construct an infographic using Oracle Lytics. Um, here we connect this live to some wine data and you can see as I scroll down, you can make this again, high fidelity kind of dashboard by adding graphics and text. And these are just metric tiles that have been created from the metrics and things available in the data set. And I can right click and do all the kind of things you expect with visualizations, including um, looking at the uh, drill into the countries and so forth. So you can see it's a live dashboard and you construct these things. You can be kind of creative in the way you put a glass around what is a normal pie chart. But the cool thing is this is connected to your data and stays that way. So if you want to have this, um, infographic updated and sent out to your wine members every month or so, you can just come in here, refresh the data, and then you have to just say, let's export that. I can say save as, and we have an option. Oh, I'm going to export it, not save as. And I can choose to export it as a file. I can choose a PowerPoint, PDF. And in this case, I'm going to choose PDF, but um, I have one ready for you. It's right here. And here's the PDF opened in Acrobat, all ready to go or be used in your website or be sent directly to your email list, whatever you choose, um, ready to go. So that's me, I'm ready to hand back off. Um, I'll come back next week and show you some more interesting things next week, next month. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Always some great stuff, love the wine. I think everyone's a big fan of wine. So <laughs> let me share my screen. We're gonna move over now to a dashboard filter bar and consumer experience with Avinash. You wanna introduce yourself and I'll pass it over to you. Thank you, Alex. Uh, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Avinash Krishnaram. I'm on the Oracle Analytics product management team. Uh, I'm gonna demo a couple of exciting and critical features that are scheduled to go GA with the March 2022 update. Uh, Alex, if, my, if I may share my screen. Uh, let me share my screen. 
Okay, all right. Uh, maybe three features. Uh, the first one is uh, notice that I'm on the visualize space and we are now introducing the percent uh, or the preview icon in visualize. Uh, so what this allows me to do as an author is I'm curating or uh, the content for my dashboarding use case. And if I want to look at how uh, this is going to uh, appear for my consumer users or the end users, right? I don't necessarily have to go to present to create a whole new presentation experience and then do a preview. I could rather hit preview from visualize. That's going to, you know, pop up uh, uh, the dashboarding uh, experience as it would be for the a typical end user, right? So it's a it's a pretty cool feature. It's going to improve a lot of efficiency for the authors, especially when they're in the curation uh, content curation mode. Uh, and the two other features that I want to highlight today, the first one is dashboard filter bar. Uh, this is really a canvas specific filter bars, and uh, this is uh, replacing what we call today as list filters uh, on canvas for a number of reasons. Uh, list filters uh, is limited in terms of functionality, and I'll highlight when I show the demo, uh, but more importantly, it only allows uh, authors to have one filter category created, right? But in most often cases, when you create a filter bar, you know, as an author, I want to add more than one filter controls or filter categories, right? That will allow my consumers to sort of play around with the data, slice and dice using different dimensions and whatnot. So we're going to extend the concept of uh, adding multiple filter categories on, uh, on a dashboard filter bar. Uh, and you can pick and choose uh, specific visualizations that you want the filter values to be passed on to. Uh, and uh, lastly, and more importantly, we are adding a bunch of property controls to dashboard filter bar, which will really allow you to sort of uh, position, uh, you know, the placement of the filter bar within the canvas. It will allow you to add uh, apply and reset buttons. Uh, you know, you will be able to freeze those buttons on a specific location in the screen, uh, do wrapping of the filter uh, UI controls within the bar in itself. So I'll do a quick demo of all these features, you know, uh, uh, in, in a short while, and you will be able to see how this is going to really uh, help you uh, sort of uh, create a, a delightful experience for your end, uh, end users uh, when it comes to interacting with the dashboard. Uh, and then the second uh, feature that I'll focus on, which is going GA for March 22 again, is uh, what we're calling as fine gain grain controls on consumer options. Now this is all in present, right? So if you look at the author's experience, there's two primary authoring experience. One is visualized where I'm sort of curating and uh, creating all the content, uh, you know, doing the analysis, structuring the visualizations into specific canvas. Uh, and then when I want to uh, get to the mode of building that presentation flow or that dashboard experience, right? I, I typically go to present and, you know, pick and choose those canvases uh, you know, into my presentation flow. Um, and uh, we're gonna be investing a lot in the present flow in terms of how do we provide some controls for the author that makes the whole end user experience more delightful, right, for the end users. And what the, the first of those features is what we're calling as uh, you know, fine-grained controls. And this is uh, on the visualization action. Um, and this feature allows uh, an author to uh, have the ability to set uh, all the visualization context menu actions, such as, you know, should I enable drill? Should I allow the user to export data or copy data? Uh, you know, should, should I allow the user to sort data? So there's, there's a bunch of context menu actions that comes along with uh, a specific visualizations within DB. Uh, and now the author can pick and choose, uh, you know, specific actions that they want to turn on or off for the consumers uh, uh, right when they open up the workbook in a, in a dashboard format, right? So now let me go to the demo. Uh, let me go back to my authoring mode. Um, so here's my use case. Uh, I'm doing some revenue analysis, right? I've built a very simple, uh, you know, canvas that shows me revenue broken down by, uh, you know, a, a number of dimensions. Uh, now my use case is such that I want to add canvas specific filters um, and I want to limit, uh, you know, the data for a given canvas, uh, uh, you know, uh, to a specific brand, right? Um, and uh, I don't want to expand the brand interaction to the consumers, but I want to expand additional filter categories that are limited by, by, that, by that brand category that will allow the consumer uh, or the end user to be able to slice and dice the data using the product and product categories within the brand, you know, customer regions and whatnot, right? Everything is limited to the brand that the author has basically curated for that particular canvas. Now to do this, uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, if you go to the visualization panel uh, under the dashboard controls, you would see that we have replaced that existing list filters with dashboard filters. Uh, let's go ahead and drag and drop that into our canvas. And uh, this is a visualization uh, essentially. So it, it comes with its own grammar edge uh, and uh, a bunch of property panels uh, as you see here. 
let's focus on the grammar. The grammar is pretty simple. It's got a, a filter controls, essentially the categories that I want to add, and it's got a, a filter which is going to limit the values of the filter controls that uh, you would add in this particular, uh, you know, in, in this particular grammar range, right? Now let's go ahead and uh, you know do what I wanted to do with my use case. So let me expand product. Uh, I'm I want to limit my filter uh, uh, my filters controls using brand, and I want to expose a bunch of uh, filter categories, right? Now, um, you see that uh, uh, list filters, like I said, was allowing you just to add one filter uh, control or category, but with dashboard filters, you can add as many as you want. Uh, and the more you add, it's going to show us the scroll bar and the show options to sort of uh, orient the filter bar in a short while. Um, and for my exercise, I'm going to limit this by, uh, let's say, this deck, right? Uh, I want to see all product related information as uh, interactive filters for my end users, but limited to the brand that I just selected. So when you uh, filter or uh, select the values or interact with the filters within the categories, you only see those specific line of businesses that generated revenue for, uh, you know, the brand that I just, uh, you know, uh, filtered on. And, uh, you know, the product type and product is also going to be limited to that particular brand I selected, right? A couple of cool things about this uh, filter bar is you can essentially, uh, you know, uh, orient uh, your placement of the filter bar anywhere you want. Uh, let's just say that I want to put it on my right hand side. Uh, oops. Uh, let's place it here. Uh, and if you go to the property panel, you have options to, uh, to set the orientation of the filter categories within the bar in itself. So with this format, I'd like to make it vertical. So the more uh, filter categories that you add, right, you will see a scroll bar that will allow you to nicely scroll and interact with additional filters. There's also options to, you know, um, turn on and turn off uh, the wrap buttons, uh, you know, uh, especially, uh, you know, when you resize the browser, it will allow you to wrap your, your filter uh, UI controls. Uh, and the, the other thing that I like about this is, uh, you know, as an author, I can choose to, uh, you know, um, open up these reset um, and apply buttons, right? That way uh, the, 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 the visualizations are only uh, refreshed, right? When the consumer is uh, selected the filter values and when they hit the apply button, right? And they can also reset the values to go back to the default value that the user has, uh, the author has curated for them, right? So, so you can see that it is much more, uh, you know, sophisticated uh, and the more richer experience when it comes to providing the on-canvas on filter experience. And I've already created my uh, my dashboard experience here, so I'm just going to bring it up. Um, so what I've done is for uh, I've basically duplicated the canvas, and for each of the canvas, uh, uh, I have uh, filtered it for a specific brand and added a bunch of uh, um, you know uh, filter categories. Uh, now when I load this uh, in a preview mode, so a consumer would typically see this right when they go back to their dashboard, they're gonna see for every single dashboard where uh, the dashboard filter has, right? As a consumer, I'm able to now interact with the values. But remember, this is now limited to the brand that the author has curated at the canvas level, which is not exposed to the consumer, right? Which is really the use case that I was trying to get to. So that's the first feature. This is going uh, GA with uh, March, 2022 update. So we'd definitely love your feedback on this. And if you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me or post your questions on Q&A. So I'll move on to the next feature, which is really in the present area. Uh, now let's just say that you know I'm, I've, I've done my analysis. I want to now share this uh, uh, this dashboard to my end users. But before sharing, I want to sort of uh, you know curate the presentation experience. So, you know I want to remove some of my my canvases. I go to present. Uh, I've already dragged and dropped some of my uh, uh, required canvases that I want to expose in the dashboarding experience. Um, and in the present property panel uh, under navigation controls, we have uh, introduced a new option called context menu actions, right? And this works in context of the full interactivity. If you have full interactivity turned off, then you know, uh, you're basically not allowing any uh, right-click actions on the visualizations for your end users. But if you turn it on, uh, we have fine-grained controls that will uh, allow the author to specify specific controls that the consumer can do or not do on uh, the visualizations. And this is at the canvas level, right? Not, not specific to visualizations, but uh, this affects all visualizations within a given canvas. Now, let's just say for my revenue, which is my KPI or my summary dashboard, I, do, I don't want to open up any of the interactions. So I, this is sort of my sensitive data. I just want to open it up in a read-only mode. So I'm going to do uh, unselect uh, 
on select all that's going to basically remove all of the context menu actions and for the rest of the canvases i just want to uh, you know uh, let's just say that i i, I just want to remove uh, export of the data right because again this is all sensitive data so i don't want my end users to export the data and uh, let's do one final click and uh, let's go back to revenue and load uh, preview the, the dashboard as an end user now this is my uh, summary uh, canvas and i'm uh, doing a right click and nothing is happening right because technically the context menu is blocked on by the author uh, let's go to a different canvas and when i do a right click you could see that you know uh, i have uh, certain options enabled based on you know where i uh, if i select a mark you would see uh, the interactions for that specific mark in terms of drill, sort, zoom, keep, and, and remove selected is available, but export is not available. And that's because the author has turned off, right? So this uh, context menu function um, or feature really allows the author to control uh, what the end user can and cannot do on their dashboard, depending on how sensitive the data is, right? So it provides more flexibility for the author to curate a, a, a very delightful experience, uh, you know, per your business users need. And we believe that uh, you know, as we invest, invest more on the present area, add more and more fine-grained controls that are specific to Canvas, uh, right? That experience is going to be uh, enriched uh, in the coming releases. So that's about my demo. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly, um, and uh, you know, I'd be happy to uh, work with you and help you update these features in uh, in the upcoming release. Thank you, and uh, back to you, Alex. Thank you. That was great to see what's coming up here. And let me just share my screen back out. Here we go for a minute. Um, we're going to move on to an auto insights demo with me. Okay, so let me share out the right screen. Give me one moment to do that. All righty. Here we go. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So as mentioned, I am gonna do a quick auto insights uh, demo here. I'm just gonna go up here, gonna create, gonna grab my information here. Bring it in real quick. And this came out with the January 2022 version update. Just gonna add this. Oh, let's change the name here. All right. And I'm pretty excited about this uh, this feature. So I'm I'm pretty excited to show you today what it can do for you if you haven't uh, tested it out yet. All right. And normally you can change these, but I'm just gonna jump right into it. Get the workbook here. And this is the auto insights icon. It's a light bulb. And it's going to take about 20 seconds. And what it's doing, it's analyzing the data set. Um, it's really going to create the best um, data visualizations based uh, using machine learning. So you can see here, uh, just taking a second, discovering insights. And let's see what it pulls up here. OK. And when it turns yellow, it means it's ready. So let's just pop this out and see what we have here. Okay, so this one looks pretty interesting. Um, it's identified a trend line here. And if we wanna see a little bit more information, if we're curious, if we might wanna add this to our dashboard, we can just hover and it's going to explain that in more detail. If we like what we see, we can just hit the plus and it's gonna add it to the dashboard for us. It's that easy. Let's add a few more here. Growth contribution bridge. What else do we like? As you can see, there's lots of uh, visualizations. Let's pull this one as well, just hitting the plus. It's as simple as that. Okay, we got some good ones added. Just going to collapse Auto Insights. Thank you, Auto Insights, for making my life a little easier. So, as you can see here, a dashboard's been created in under 30 seconds for us. And of course, you can still customize this. You can change the colors, you can turn on the filters, you can bring in different attributes. Um, one thing that is um, great that Oracle Analytics does, for example, you can see in the top 10 uh, cities by profit, we have nine listed here. And then we have the others uh, right here. And what we can do, you can see that Oracle Analytics actually 
create a custom calculization for us. You can go in, you can change that if needed, but it's great for my purpose, so I'm gonna leave it there. And as I mentioned, it's ready to go. So um, let's just drag a few things to filter here. Let's try a customer segmentation, maybe product category. And in under a minute, I have something that I'm ready to show the executives. So I'm just gonna put this over in present mode. And here we go, and it's not a stagnant dashboard. You can turn on the filters, let's see. Let's turn on corporate, and there we go. Or if you are at the executive level, let's say you don't have time to go and uh, find the, the technical folks or the data analysts, you can do this yourself. Let Auto Insights do it for you. I love this because I can go in and I have help. You know, I don't have to stare at a white screen and try to figure out what I can do next. It gives me a uh, point to jump off from and then I can customize it from there. So really excited about this feature. If you want some uh, more information, uh, a bit more of a walkthrough, uh, Philippe did a really great, uh, a great overview on our Oracle Analytics YouTube page. We will put the, the link for that in the chat. So I'll encourage you to visit that and check that out as well. Otherwise, I am going to jump over to our next demo here. And let me just share my screen out. Back to the presentation. Mm, one moment here, let's find out where that went. <laughs> All right. And in the meantime, uh, everyone, you can also uh, put some question directly in the Q&A and we will answer all the question live at the end of the webinar. Okay, we're gonna move over to um, a demo with customer segmentation using RFM. Let's see, we have Fabian joining us, uh, I believe from Mexico, is that correct? That is correct. Well, welcome. We're happy to have you here today. We're excited for your demo. I am going to uh, stop sharing my screen and let you take it over if you want to introduce yourself. Thank you. Yeah, so my name is Fabian Munoz. I'm based in Guadalajara, Mexico. I'm a principal data engineer and also doing data analysis with Oracle Analytics. Today, um, I want to show you this use case, which is used to segment customers. This is uh, for a retail online shop, um, which is taking the data after people who are checking your website and then uh, buying your products, they become your customers. And then we want to know what they are doing in terms of how recent they are looking at your website, how frequent are they buying, and the amount of those, of those products that they purchased. So uh, here you have the first uh, visualization, which is showing the recency score, and the frequency score and the segments. So basically we have people who are uh, hibernating, which we basically lost them. They haven't gone through the website recently. They, they don't do frequent buys, so they, they're lost kind of. And then to the other extreme are people who are classified or segment as champions. So you have here your entire universe of customers. And then, we're also asking those customers to provide a bit more of themselves so we can do a, a demographic analytics. And with it, we're putting together K-means and PCA to know which of those attributes mean the most for this analysis. And it turns out that for this particular example, it's the gender. So we see a clear difference in the, in the clustering for female participants and male participants. And we're coloring from one to five, which is the, the range of the uh, values that the R RFM score can take. Then down here, we have the segments by gender again, but also adding on which uh, particular segment they are. So uh, we look at hibernating, for example, we have more participants, more gentlemen uh, on, on the hibernating segment than, than we have uh, ladies. Um, then here we have that same score, but by generation. So we have the baby boomers, generation X, et cetera. And then finally, but by their, uh, what they do, these are sales representatives, promoters, et cetera. So you can see that it's the entire portrait of your customers. And then if we go to the detail, we wanna know what, what they're buying, right? So 
that's how they segment it. And here it is. So on my left side of the canvas, I have the male participants. So baby boomers and Generation X are, are those who are more representative. And this is the um, what they do, where they're located, and the type of product that they take. And down here, I can see this other visual that is showing me who has the, the best or the highest RFM score, right? Now, on this other side, I have the, the female participant. Same type of uh, arrangement, but filtered out by, by gender. If I go to the next one, the category, it's going to allow me to, to do the drill to the specific product. So here it is. We have from champions to hibernating and the amount of customers we are obser observing on those, on those segments. Uh, down here, I have the products. I see the score and the number of customers that they are uh, choosing those products. Then we have here, the again, uh, the categories. So tools, popular, and one-pointer are the, the biggest three where we are observing more, more customers. And finally, by region. So if I click one of these, for instance, the need attention segment, it'll filter everything else and show what products and what category of those products and regions those customers are, are buying or were buying, but now they need attention. And one of the things that, that you can get from this canvas is actually um, selecting the correct strategy for communication. And so if they need attention, uh, should we tell them that there's new tools that they might be interested in? Probably. And finally, a timeline, which is showing the amount of customers I see who were purchasing over time. I have a, a forecast here, here with my EDS model. And finally, the RFM month over month and, uh, and the amount of customers, number of customers who, who bought products. Here again, the uh, segments by month. So I hope this demo was interesting and hopefully give you ideas on how to implement customer segmentation. Thank you, Alex, back to you. Thank you so much. That was great. Absolutely love that. We're gonna we have a couple more minutes here before we're going to move over to the Q and A. So let me find where my PowerPoint went again. <laughs> we're gonna move over to Jamie with an FAW demo. All right. Here we go. Thank you, Alex. So I will share my screen here in just a second. All right. So let me know if you can't see my screen, but I will continue otherwise. So um, I'm doing the Fusion Analytics demo. Um, what I'm going to show today is the supply chain management analytics and some of the out of the box capabilities um, in terms of what analyses are available for you to um, use right out of the box. Um, so just a quick overview real quick um, in terms of um, what is available out of the box for um, Fusion Supply Chain Management Analytics. Um, we have cost management um, analyses straight out of the box, inventory, um, order management. And so I'm gonna go over a few of these today. So um, just to start off, we have a sales order analysis. Um, and what we can see here is if I were to go in from kind of a more customized view, I can go and see that these values are coming straight from SCM, so your future environment, but I'm gonna collapse that real quick so we can focus on what we're, what we're looking at today. So um, you can see um, the order amount for the current quarter, um, perfect order line amount, return lines amount, cancel amount, um, and also open orders on hold. Um, as I move my Zoom screen, give me a second here. Um, and so also you can see um, by the business unit. So you can see uh, China is really knocking it out of the park here for the perfect order amount in this demo. Um, you can also see the, um, the breakdown by category in this pie chart, and also um, just by quarter and the quarterly perfect order percent. Um, this is just a demo environment, so it is, um, you know, just a few quarters here um, in this, this uh, view, um, but what's kind of cool is if I double click here, since this is showing a quarterly amount, um, it will then uh, filter based off of um, what is, what entails, or what makes up this Quarter. So you can see that um, since there's a filter applied, I can then drill down further into different categories um, based off of that quarter. Um, another thing that I can show, so I just uh, clicked out to zoom back out again. Um, another thing that I will show today and just check the time here, um, we have an open sales order analysis. This is another out of the box um, 
analysis that is available. Um, so you can see your open lines amount, return lines amount, um, past due lines amount, um, open orders count, and open orders on hold. Um, and then also um, you can see it just for this example, it looks like all of our orders are past due 100%. Um, but typically, if you are not a demo environment, that would not be all of them, you would think, right? Um, but and then you could see what else we have. Um, Fulfillment line status awaiting shipping. You see um, just various breakdowns of um, the fulfillment line status, um, back ordered, build, etc. Um, and just one last visual to show you in this final minute here. And um, we have an inventory transaction analysis. And this is not all of the out of the box. Um, uh, analyses that we have, just a little subset, but you can see um, we have a primary quantity, issue quantity, receipt quantity, um, consignment transferred quantity, et cetera. Um, you can also see that the inventory transactions over time, um, and something that I think is cool to set the OAC feature is you can uh, zoom in to a certain area. So maybe I want to zoom in here um, and I right click and I click zoom chart. I can go right into where I went and see the details behind each of these, um, this, this graph here. Um, with that, I will pass back to Alex. Thank you everyone for hopping on today. Thanks, Jamie. I appreciate you walking us through that quickly. And in our final moment here, oops. In our final moment. That was my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was wondering what was going on. Okay. Um, Okay, and we're gonna move over now to our q and I think we had a couple polls to run, Ben, is that correct? Yes, we have a couple of questions, yeah, correct. Okay, of course, before we hop into those questions and the Q&A session, I'd like to ask for your help. If you are currently using OAC, OAS, FAW, or OBIEE, please take a moment. This is anonymous. It's quick. You can use the QR code here. Let us know what you think of the product. Um, this is anonymous, like I said, but we do take these to heart. We go in there and see where we can improve the product and what we're doing great. So let us know. We appreciate your time and uh, joining us today. And let's move over to the Q&A. So I'll ask um, the other panelists, if you're still on, you can unmute yourself, uh, start your video, and we'll jump into these questions. So first question, Jamie, where do we all get a Run OAC shirt? <laughs> You know, um, I, I'll have to find out. Um, I got this actually when I was back as a, as a customer. So um, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, some possibilities for that if they are still being made. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So let's see. What do we have, uh, Alex? We just want to hop into the questions and panelists. If you uh, see any question in here that pertains to uh, you or what you presented, you can of course just hop in there, button and grab it. Um, otherwise, we'll start with the first question. Um, of course, you can ask questions OAS, OAC, FAW, we're here to answer. Uh, so let us know what you would like to know. <laughs> okay, so Let's go with the first one, maybe, Alex. <clears throat> Is web-based semantic modeler replacement for RPD? So I can, I can comment, yeah. It, there will still be an RPD that's generated by the semantic modeler. It's really an improvement of the tool. Uh, currently, you have to use the Windows desktop uh, tool to create a subject area. And with the new semantic modeler, you'll be able to create it through the browser. All right, next question. Um, any idea when there will be out of the box integration with OTM GTM? It's from Bill. Anyone on the Oracle team want to grab that? I think that one we can take it offline. I will follow up with Bill on that one. Okay, next one for the web modeling. What will be the lowest role? Will there be 
uh, compartmentalization, compartmentalized administration per business department um, capable? That's a good question. I don't actually know the answer to that one. So we will take that as an offline uh, discussion. I think it'll still be um, uh, the, at least at the current, it's likely to be the BI author, uh, data model author role that we have today. Um, there may be some additional ways to control them, but uh, we need to find out to confirm. Okay, next one. Question about the planned uh, Microsoft Power BI connector. Will this work with SBase as data source, also using the SBase security? Today we have some hard questions. <laughs> so I will say uh, the Microsoft Power BI connector is planned for first half of the year. Uh, is it going to work with SBase as data source and SBase security? I'm not sure. We will have to follow up on that. It's two different things, but um, yeah, the S space connector is already in OAC and does um, adhere to the S space security. But you wouldn't go through the Power BI connector to S space. You just go direct to S space. Um, okay. Can the wine graphs uh, be converted to mobile to show real-time mobile um, selling data? Yeah, I will take that one. So yes, uh, the, you can take any type of visualization in OIC and it's automatically um, converted uh, on the mobile app. So you just have to open it. So we could send, uh, I'm not sure who created this, uh, this, this, but yeah, we can send it to you you can see it now if it's a viz using a lot of images i think if i remember the wine one has been made by a designer and he put some photoshop images um, you might not see it exactly the way you will see it fully designed with all of these pictures uh, you can open it still as a pdf but when it's like highly curated data viz it's not often uh, translated as it should yeah. Next one, Alexei. Uh, how many languages are available for AI speech? Barry, I think it was during the during your demo when you were showing NLG. The natural language generation. It'll be English and French. Uh, and the, we support 28 languages for the NLP, the query. So if you want to type your query, like I showed as well, that's 28 languages. But by the end of this calendar, we're looking at upgrading the um, service that we use to do the natural language generation, the narrative. Um, and then it's going to basically have a, a huge selection of languages. And that's coming soon, but um, somewhere towards the end of this calendar. OK, next question. Um... Do we have a link with a step-by-step -step to integrate OAC with JIRA Atlassian? Um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, that one is a tricky one. I don't know how to integrate OAC with JIRA. Avinash, do you know, or maybe Jamie? Or... I'm pretty sure some of our development teams have done that. I don't believe there exists a step to step to step instruction guide. Uh, we can certainly follow up and maybe write a blog post about it if it's helpful for our customers. Perfect. So we have the next one. I see that I think Alex left. I'm very interested in Avinash information on dashboard filter bar. Uh, this will help us replicate some functionality in classic dashboard prompt for customer that we consult on. Is this in current OAC version or do we need to wait for March 2022 release? Is there a video we can replay on this functionality, Avinash? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, coming with the March 2022 update um, and there will be a blog post uh, on dashboard filter bar in particular, and we'll provide some uh, guidelines and best principles on uh, how and when to use dashboard filter bar versus filter bar. 
so look forward to that. Um, and uh, you know, the blog will also have a short demo uh, video uh, that will explain the feature uh, with, with a specific use case. So we'll, uh, that's coming up. The feature itself will go GA with March 2022. Perfect. Alex, you want to go for the next one, maybe? And you're on mute, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, let me start over. <laughs> In this version, we have uh, fixed the Pareto graph error, uh, where when scrolling the page, um, the Pareto graph moved on the page. I think uh, I. Oh, sorry, I was just going to say. I think I know what uh, Fabio refers to when he talks about the Pareto graph error. I I don't have an answer, but I can take it offline with Philippe, and uh, we can provide some response to to Fabio on this question. Perfect. Um, so we have a question for Barry. Where can we get more information about creating those infographic that you demonstrated, Barry? So all the capabilities to use OAC and OAS are available on our YouTube channel. There's a whole section on tips and techniques. And essentially, um, when you assemble that infographic style dashboard, it's really just being creative. Um, all the techniques to create it are actually on YouTube. So you can see how to create pie charts, how to lay in the graphics, how to put them behind charts, all the, all the kind of bits you need are there. So once you figure it out, it's just a bit of creativity and a bit of... Um, artistic design to make it look pretty. Uh, perfect. Um, maybe Jamie, we have a question not specifically on FAW. Oh yeah, on FAW. Um, it's from Sentil Raj. It's a FAW subject area. Are they the same as from OTBI sub subject area or not the same as OTBI? So there is a long-term convergence of getting OTBI and FAW to be converged. In a sense, that is a long-term project. Um, in the meantime, for out-of-the-box um, functionalities, there are certain, um, certain areas that do reflect um, the OTBI subject areas, but not all. Um, but we are constantly improving upon that. And all the, again, the end goal is to get a, a final convergence together. Excellent. Uh, I see we have also in the chat a lot of questions from people about the links. Uh, apparently, some people cannot copy the links in the chat, uh, which is, I know, blocked sometimes uh, for corporation. Uh, so what we are going to do, it's usually one day after this event, you are going to receive an email, follow-up email from Zoom with all our LinkedIn, the roadmap, the YouTube video, of a presentation in PDF, and this time we are going to put all these links. So don't worry, you are all going to receive the links by tomorrow uh, lunchtime. Okay, next question, Alex, maybe? All right, I think we have some that we just need to dismiss here. Um, is Auto Insights only available on file based data sets? So not, you want to take it, Avinash? Yeah. Oh, no, go for it, man. Okay, so it's uh, Auto Insight is available for all data sets. So if it's a CSV file, Excel file, you can run it. If you have a table and you run a data flow and you store the content of this table into an OAC data set, you can run Auto Insight. Now you cannot run Auto Insight on top of a subject area or directly on top of a table. You have first to put this table or subject area in data flow, put it in an official uh, OAC data set, and then run Auto Insight. And Avinash, if you want to add anything, you, you can also. No, you got it right. I think the next focus for the team is to enable Auto Insights and RPD. Uh, that's on the roadmap, uh, no timeline to share yet. Perfect, and when you say RPD, it's basically going to be for subject area. Yes, correct. Okay, perfect. Let's go, Alex. Um, 
<laughs> okay, for auto insights, can we use the same for complaints management example, multiple tickets through chat? I'm not sure I understand the question. Perhaps uh, I mean, if you're online, maybe you can speak up. Um, no, we cannot speak, but uh, I think, yeah, complaint management, multiple ticket through chat, multiple ticket through chat. I guess, yeah, you will just need to put that into a data set uh, and, uh, and it should be okay. It's not, not a big deal. It's, it's, it's using basically all the metadata. So it's not really about just um, an accounting data set or a procurement data set. It's really uh, just scanning the metadata, recognizing if you are uh, using, I don't know, a time dimension and, uh, and the sales fact, or if it's using, uh, I don't know, any, anything else. And then it's uh, creating on the fly the data visualization. So of course it could be for complaint management, now complaint management, we are not going to run sentiment analysis on the complaint to know if it's a positive or negative or super uh, negative complaint. We will do basic things like how many complaints you receive during the day and this type of things. But as of now, we are not going to do um, language recognition, for example, and, and tell you exactly um, uh, what's the sentiment on that. Um, perfect, so next. Uh, when I try to use auto insights, it gives me message, this subject area, uh, not support uh, by auto insights. I am using RPD to create a data model. Yeah, like we said, uh, auto insights on RPD or subject area is uh, not supported yet for the initial release, but that's something on the roadmap uh, for the team. Will the uh, will these DV workbooks be made available to the public? That's for Barry. <laughs> yeah, I can answer that one. So yes, they are available to the public. Um, we have a uh, public facing instance of Oracle Analytics Cloud. We um, call it internally or externally called Marmite. So if you want to look for this Marmite demo environment, we can add that link to that environment. You don't need to log in, just jump on. And some of the um, projects that I showed are all available in that there. So we could add that link, um, Ben, to the email. Okay, next question. Um, could we have uh, some web-based semantic modeler, whether this web mod modeler could uh, coexist along with imported RPD? Um, you will be able to have different RPD into the semantic modeler. So you can import your RPD in the semantic modeler you will be able to manage multiple RPD in the semantic modeler, but, um, but they will need to be in the new semantic modeler format. Uh, so Avinash, it's correct, right? They will be able to have multiple semantic modeler RPD beside each of them managed by different teams, for example. Right. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So, so if the question is, can uh, an RPD from an on-premise uh, instance coexist with uh, an RPD on the web-based modeler? Yes. It will. Yeah. You. You should. That functionality is available. Yes. All right. Moving on to the next question: Does FAW have RPD modeling behind it? Jimmy. So I am looking up to see if I can find some answers behind that at the moment. Um, but if anybody else on this call is. <laughs> it totally does. That's the secret source behind the whole FAW. Thanks, Barry. All right, we'll move on to the next question. Um, is there any video or webinars to show the improvements of OAC with S-Space, Oracle EPM connection? Uh, fully leverage hierarchies for drill down. I, I think we do have a video somewhat related to that. Um, I don't know if it's um, necessarily the fully leverage hierarchies for drill down part, um, but I can see if I can find that video in the meantime. All right, thanks, Jamie. Moving along here, okay. 
It'll be nice to replicate all features from classic prompts and DV prompts in the future. DV prompts are one of the roadblocks to propose customers to move to DV from classic. Uh, great work, Oracle Analytics team. Thank you. <laughs> Looking forward for more updates to uh, improvise DV filters. Uh, um, I was chatting with Bhavan offline. I think the most important feature from a convergence perspective between classic and DV on filter bar is variables or parameters support, which is going to address a lot of the critical use cases for customers to move over from uh, classic into, into DV. So that's a feature. Uh, it is uh, it's, it's, it's development in progress. Uh, again, as we get closer to uh, uh, dev completion, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll share a timeline and the ETA uh, for the target release. Okay, we have a few more here. Um, this one is about the partnership of Oracle with the racing industry. Um, what, what is that one? Sorry, I didn't catch that quite. Um, the partnership of Oracle with oh, the yeah. industry. So, okay, uh, what is Oracle got to do with Swift U, 3D Blender, the metaverse? This is revolutionary. Uh, yes, it's revolutionary. Uh, you can see the metaverse up. Well, I don't know how to do that. Okay, uh, it's here. Okay, I have <laughs> the VR here. So. We are planning to do a lot of stuff. Uh, first, we play with the VR, then we will decide what we do with it. <laughs> but, but no, we have a lot of plan uh, with all of that. And with Red Bull, um, we are the, the title uh, sponsor, which means that you can see our logo on the car, but not only that, we are helping them with AI and with infrastructure also to do all the simulations. So we do like a um, million and million of si uh, simulation uh, using compute power, using machine learning and more uh, to see how the race can be the best. So it's one thing that we do to help uh, the Red Bull team and we do also many more things and we will continue with uh, all other things you, uh, you have been requesting. Yeah. Okay, it looks like Barry's gonna take the next one. Um, yeah, uh, the question is about um whether answers, dashboards, and delivers the old classic BIE components are the back end for the newer stuff that we were showing today? The answer is no, but the answers, dashboards, and the classic BI hasn't gone away. It's still there. Um, the RPD and the way the semantic layer is, is exactly the same, and that supports everything else. But the data visualization and the predominantly the projects we showed today built in DV is like a parallel way of looking at modern BI. And if you want to look at it from the Gartner's perspective of mode one and mode two, Answers, dashboards, delivers really is that IT centralized way of addressing mode one BI. The data visualization stuff is now the mode two approach of um, business self-service and getting in there and exploration and discovery. Um, they both sit together. Neither one is going away. Thanks, Barry. Um, let's move on. We got two more. Oh. Third one came in. <laughs> okay, next one. Any thoughts on allowing data sets to be organized in folders? I can take that. I know the request is on the roadmap. Uh, I'm not sure where it is on the roadmap. Uh, so we can get you more information uh, after we connect with our product team in house. The next one is connectivity with Oracle EPM cloud applications covered in OAC. Oh, I can answer it. Yeah, there is a connector um, that is built into OAC, uh, native one that we have for like Oracle applications. And we've done this uh, connected directly to PVCS. Actually, we did it with ePVCS. Um, and you can bring back all the planning information through to Oracle Analytics Cloud. And then you can blend it up with other sources and then figure out what to do about the plan rather than just see the plan. Okay, next one. Is there any plan to release uh, OAC as an app in VR world to use AR, XR, et cetera? Uh, 
uh, interesting question. I'd be curious to understand uh, your use case. Uh, uh, but yeah, you feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I don't think there are any plans at the at this moment, but, but depending on how customers uh, feel about it, right? You, what kind of use cases you have, right? We could definitely add something into our roadmap. All right, and the last one we have here, what is the specific date for the March release? I think it is 4th of March. I would need to confirm, but it is, I believe, 4th of, 4th, uh, 4th of March, which is a Friday, I think. All right, and we are about to wrap up here. I did want to say, Beth, uh, let me know if you are interested in a Run OAC t-shirt. Um, you can send her your information. We've got lots of stuff to give out. This is only for uh, the US only. We can only ship to the US, unfortunately, right now. Beth, I think you're on if you want to chime in there. That was a question. It just didn't get put in the Q&A. That is correct. I have some Run OAC t-shirts that I would love to find homes for, as well as a few other items. Um, I'll put a link in the chat. We have some goodies that we'd love to share with our Oracle customers. <laughs> and um, just send me an email with all of your information and I will gladly ship one out to you. All right. Thanks, Beth. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today that wraps up the oracle analytics live for february 2022 this was recorded it will be put on youtube shortly there will be an email going out tomorrow with uh, more details and the links that we put in the chat today um, anything else from our oracle team before we hop off oh good have a good lunch <laughs> <laughs> have a great day everyone enjoy your weekend and thank you for attending thanks Bye.